good morning students welcome to real analysis lectures in this lecture we will discuss uniform continuity in a metric space okay <clears throat> fine so we already know about uh, what is meant by continuous so if f maps from m to n uh, then we say that we talk about continuity continuity of f at a point you can call it say x naught okay so continuity is a local property you can say it is a, a local property whereas uniform continuity which we are going to discuss now is uh, globally so we don't talk about uniform f is uniformly continuous at a point okay it is uh, f is said to be uniformly continuous on entire m if it satisfies a following property okay so definition uh, looks similar to continuity but there is a huge difference okay so let's first define what is meant by uniformly continuous so you take f of course m and n is a metric space n comma rho is another metric space is said to be uniformly continuous if for a given epsilon greater than 0 we should able to find delta greater than 0 such that such that uh, whenever d of x comma y is less than delta then rho of f of x f of y be less than epsilon okay right fine <clears throat> because this is as i said we are not uh, talking about a particular point you are actually talking about the entire domain uh, obviously one can guess that if every uniformly continuous function is actually a continuous function right because the uh, for given any epsilon no matter what x you are given there always exists data such that whenever this two point satisfies this then it is true right so clearly uniform continuity is always implies continuous right but the converse is not true that means not every continuous function is uh, actually uniformly continuous okay uh, we can quickly uh, go through a small ex one example you take f of x and uh, r defined as f of x is equal to 1 by x uh, defined on x belongs to 0 to infinity positive real line okay then we know that this f is continuous okay continuous but this f is not uniformly continuous for that we take x the idea is uh, we take x and y are very very close to 0 okay so that you can estimate by less than delta so you take x is 1 by n and uh, y is 1 upon n plus 1 then x minus mod x minus y mod x minus y is uh, 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1 okay which is uh, n n will get cancelled 1 upon n into n plus 1 right so if n is very very large then it tends to 0 as n tending to infinity right so we can take x uh, n a large sufficiently large so that x and y are very close to 0 right but what about f of x and f of y the f of x and f of y this value is actually uh, n minus n plus 1 which is this so therefore this is same as 1 but is it necessary that it is always less than given any epsilon greater than 0 no because this uh, if I take epsilon is equal to half then this is contradiction right it cannot be less than half right so that uh, arises because therefore it shows that f is not uniformly continuous right okay uh, we have seen already what is meant by Lipschitz function so every Lipschitz function is actually uniformly continuous okay uh, how you can prove that if f suppose f is Lipschitz we want to show that it is uniformly continuous so start with epsilon greater than 0 then we want to find some delta satisfying that condition right so since uh, f is Lipschitz so there exists some k okay positive real number such that rho of f of x f of y okay is less than or less than or equal to k times d of x comma y right that suggests uh, what should be what we have to take our delta we want this should be less than epsilon so we want this should be less than epsilon so take your delta as this epsilon by k right then for any x comma y satisfying this condition you can check that this is less than epsilon so lipsis always implies so uh, lipsis implies uniformly continuous okay but this converse need not be true uh, one can quickly have an example f of x is equal to square root of x okay you can prove that this is uh, uniformly continuous but 
not but this is not ellipsis uh, by proving suppose it, it is ellipsis then there exists some k satisfying this condition so in particular take y is equal to 0 then um, what you are getting is root x is less than or equal to k times mod x for every x greater than or equal to 0 okay so if you bring because uh, this x positive so if you take x non zero then this is less than or equal to k right as extending to infinity what we get here is that this tends to infinity right so this is a contradiction that means this function cannot be lipsis function right now uh, we have seen example that uh, not every continuous function is uniformly continuous but if our domain whatever we are talking about if this m is compact okay that means any continuous function on a compact domain is uniformly continuous so f will become uniformly continuous at this time right the proof again is not difficult we want to show that this f is uniformly continuous so start with epsilon greater than zero now already given that f is continuous okay so for each x for each x there exists you can call it delta x right such that uh, whenever d of x comma y is less than delta x then what we have is rho of f of x f of y is less than say epsilon by 2 okay <clears throat> now that means you take this uh, this y y belongs to ball around x or delta x or you take delta x upon 2 then for every x in m we can see that every y in m here is that it is an open cover right open cover for m but m is compact so m is compact implies what we have here is there exist finite sub cover so union of b x i's okay this you call it simply r i from 1 to n where each r i is nothing but delta x i upon 2 right then you take our delta is uh, minimum of this r i's okay and then uh, we show that whenever a delta of this delta will work that means whenever d of x comma y is less than delta then uh, we will show that rho of f of x comma f of y is less than epsilon okay how we do this uh, since x is in m and m is covered by union of this b x i of r i so there exists some j such that x belongs to this ball around x j of r j right okay also we can uh, write this d of y comma x j by using triangle inequality you can write d of y comma x plus d of x comma x j right but d of y comma x is less than delta but delta is minimum of this therefore delta is less than or equal to each r j r i in particular it is less than r j so i can write here r j plus this is also less than r j right because it is less than r j by 2 so it is less than right that means it is equal to 2 times rj but uh, from here you can see that 2 times rj is delta xi okay this is nothing but delta xj right this shows that this y is actually in the ball bxj right of radius delta x right okay now that means d of uh, y is here right that means uh, this d of x x y comma x j is less than this delta x j right so therefore by continuity property what you can write here is that rho of f of y comma f of x j is less than epsilon by 2 this uh, whatever we have here this condition okay <clears throat> fine now actually we want to find rho of f of x comma f of y by triangle inequality you can write this as f of x comma f of x j by introducing this plus rho of f of x j comma f of y right this is less than epsilon by 2 f of x comma f of x j because they are uh, this is less than epsilon by 2 plus this is also less than epsilon by 2 right you can see that x is here where is that? this one so x belongs to this so that means distance between x comma xj is less than delta j right uh, therefore f of rho of f of x comma f of xj is less than epsilon by 2 and this is also less than epsilon by 2 that shows that rho of f of x comma f of y is less than epsilon therefore f is uniformly continuous so as a corollary or remark you can check that 
any continuous function and a closed and bounded interval is always uniformly continuous okay for example if you say x power n f of x is equal to x power n on any interval a comma b is uniformly continuous right okay now we'll see some properties of uniformly continuous functions so if f is uniformly continuous okay then it maps cauchy sequence to cauchy sequence that means if you take any x and here if it is cauchy then f of xn is cauchy in n right uh, if f is uniformly continuous we can also see that this is not true for continuous functions okay uniform continuity is required here right okay uh, how proof we want to show that this f of xn is cauchy in n that means you start with epsilon uh, greater than 0 okay then we want to show that there is some stage after that this f of x n are uh, less than that epsilon and so on okay because this x n is cauchy sequence and you have this epsilon greater than 0 right so take x n is a cauchy sequence and we have this epsilon uh, using the fact that this f is uniformly continuous so there exists some delta greater than 0 such that whenever 2 d of x comma y is less than delta then rho of f of x okay comma f of y whenever we have this situation then we have this right now for this delta we will apply the condition of xn is cauchy so xn is cauchy sequence implies okay for this delta there exists some stage you can call it k such that distance between xn comma xm is less than okay you can write this delta for every n comma m greater than or equal to k right now by using this property okay by here what you get here is rho of f of xn f of xm okay is less than epsilon for all n comma m greater than or equal to k this is precisely saying that this f of xn is cauchy sequence okay right uh, as i said this uh, statement need not be true if f is not uniformly continuous quickly you can check this f of x is equal to 1 by x we already seen that this is continuous function okay uh, but it is not uniformly continuous we have seen already okay continuous but not uniformly continuous right now you can see that this function uh, doesn't map uh, Cauchy sequence to Cauchy sequence for that we know already this 1 by n is Cauchy but what about f of this sequence f of 1 by n which is the n right this is not cauchy this is not cauchy sequence right so to map cauchy sequence to cauchy sequence we require that f should be uniformly continuous right okay we also see another similar property uh, that if f is uniformly continuous then uh, it maps totally bounded sets to totally bounded sets. That means if A is totally bounded here, then we can show that this f of A is totally bounded in N. Okay, fine. <clears throat> the proof is not difficult. We want to show that this f of A is totally bounded. Okay, fine. So for epsilon greater than zero, somehow we want to show that this f of A is covered by finitely many balls. Or finitely many sets of diameter less than epsilon and so on right so this epsilon greater than zero and a is totally bounded so that means what we know uh, that a is covered by finitely many balls and so on but before taking that one we use the fact that this f is uniformly continuous okay uniformly continuous so for this epsilon we have there exists some delta greater than zero satisfying what whenever dx comma y is less than delta then rho of fx fy is less than epsilon now we use the fact that a is totally bounded and delta is greater than zero okay therefore there exist finitely many points x1 x2 okay xn such that a is covered by union of these balls around x size of this delta radius okay now using the uh, maps this f of a is contained in f of this so union of this is contained in f of b x i s okay right <coughs> huh. 
Now use this fact and see what we will get. Okay, what is the meaning of this? Yes, many times we have observed here that is same as saying that I'll write it here. Okay, what is meaning of this? See, y belongs to sorry, this y belongs to ball around x of delta implies so whenever whenever y belongs to this then f of y belongs to ball around f of x of epsilon this is same as saying that f of this p x delta is contained in ball of f of x of epsilon right so this is same as saying this so now you can use that f of b x is contained in b epsilon of f of x right so there therefore if we use this here what we get here is that this is contained in this is contained in union of f of b x delta is, is contained in union of b of f of x i okay of epsilon where y is from 1 to n so that shows that f of a is contained here right that means this is contained in finitely many balls so f of a is totally bounded right so if f is uniformly continuous okay then again you can start thinking of some example where if it is just a continuous function can it maps totally bounded sets to totally bounded sets so that i'll leave it to exercise next class uh, we'll see something about uh, sequence of functions okay stop here